The N54 is a fantastic engine. N54 is the cheapest way to make big power. Wrong. But what many don't realize is that BMW has also created an engine that some consider to be the modern 2JZ, the N54. What is the biggest downside? Reliability. Now this is really where a lot of enthusiasts and the general public seem to get turned off with this platform. In February 2006 at the Geneva Motor Show, BMW launched an engine that would redefine everything the company's engines were previously known for. The N54 represented an ideological paradigm shift as it was the company's first mass-produced, direct-injected and turbocharged engine. Featuring two low-inertia turbochargers, piezoelectric fuel injectors and dual-variable valve timing, the N54 was unlike anything offered by BMW before. While the N54 has proved to be a bit of a handful when it comes to maintenance and reliability, the engine has been praised by members of the car media and owners alike, winning six straight International Engine of the Year awards. Despite BMW never creating a motorsports version of the N54, this engine has cemented its legacy as a premier option for car enthusiasts of any budget looking to make big power. The N54 and his little brother were designed as basically the successors to the much-loved M54. As such, the N54 was never really designed to be the next flagship of BMW engine performance. But despite having fairly pedestrian goals for this engine, a whole lot of technology and engineering went into the N54. The N54 features an aluminum block, forged crankshaft, forged rods, as dual vanos, which means it has variable valve timing on both the intake and exhaust cams. And the block also features piston oil squirters. Now these are important because it helps to cool down the pistons from arguably the biggest change in BMW's engine design philosophy. The addition of twin Mitsubishi TDO3 turbos making 8 PSI of boost at 10.2 to 1 compression ratio. Now in the early 2000s when BMW was designing this engine, that compression ratio sounded kind of outlandishly high for a turbo engine. But all of this was possible due to the second marquee technology on this engine, direct injection. The M54 uses six piezoelectric fuel injectors. All of these technologies come together to make an engine that produces more than 100 horsepower per liter. Now for a turbocharged engine that might not sound like a lot, but for a manufacturer like BMW that has primarily focused on naturally aspirated power, crossing that 100 horsepower per liter mark was absolutely huge. And then you add in on top of that the well-mannered driving behaviors of the N54, you can start to understand why this engine won six straight engine of the year awards. And that's kind of amazing seeing how the N54 was BMW's first turbocharged engine in almost 30 years. Basically, you could say the N54 was a first attempt. And while there are a lot of great things about this first attempt, you can still tell it was a first attempt. If you have an N54, or if you know somebody who has an N54, it should not surprise you that these engines have a lot of common problems. Common problems for the BMW N54 include just generalized failure of the coolant system, rather if that's a water pump, the thermostat, or the dreaded Mickey Mouse flange failing, the intake valves and the intake ports getting plugged up with carbon, the high pressure fuel pump failing, and in fact BMW was actually forced to issue a national recall for this, fuel injectors failing, charge pipes failing, oil filter housing gaskets failing, and then causing another problem where the serpentine belt will get wet and then get sucked inside the engine, the valve cover gasket leaking or even the entire valve cover cracking, and, well, it's a BMW, so of course you're going to get an oil pan gasket leak and it's going to leak oil all over your garage and driveway. And the big addition to this engine, the turbos, those have issues too. It's not uncommon for these wastegates to get rattled or for the entire turbo to fail. Now, some of these issues, they are pretty simple to take care of. For example, that Mickey Mouse flange I mentioned earlier, that's pretty easy to swap out. It's right on the front of the engine. You just order a metal part from ECS or FCP Euro or wherever you want to order it, and problem solved, never have to think about it again. 
but a majority of the problems that the N54 has, these problems are a lot more costly. And not only costly in terms of monetary value, but they will cost you a lot of time and labor to fix these. I am never going to financially recover from this. But if the M54 sketchy reliability record hasn't scared you off, it's actually pretty easy to find one of these engines. Just like the S54, which I covered in the last episode of Power Rankings, the best way to get yourself an N54 is to just go buy a car that has one from the factory. Even if you are trying to swap an N54 into another chassis, your best option is to just buy a complete donor car and swap that engine. But unlike the S54 though, the N54 was just a normal production engine. BMW threw this engine in a ton of BMWs all the way from 2006 up to 2016, so about a 10 year model run. Now in terms of availability, the N54 isn't quite at the level of the Honda K series or the LS, but it's actually pretty easy to find examples of this engine. All you gotta do is just open up Facebook Marketplace and you can find yourself a 135i, a 335i, or a 535i and you can be on your way to experiencing the N54 lifestyle. In terms of the availability of OEM replacement parts, things are pretty easy as well. The N54 isn't actually that super old of an engine. It only went out of production about eight years ago, and the N54 also shares parts with the N55. So a lot of those parts are still in production. So if you're just looking for OEM parts to maintenance your M54, you can run down to the dealership or get online and go to FCP Euro or ECS Tuning or even go to a brick and mortar store like O'Reilly's or AutoZone. There's going to be parts for your car. And when it comes to maintenancing and servicing your M54, things are definitely helped out by the M54's absolutely bananas aftermarket. As great as the M54 is in stock trim, most M54 enthusiasts will agree this is an engine that is best enjoyed, well, modified. The N54's aftermarket scene is kind of like the LS's in that there's just so many good aftermarket options for upgrades that you can almost get analysis paralysis trying to sort it all out. It doesn't matter if you're trying to do port injection or big turbos or tuning, you are going to be spoiled for choice. There's just so many options for anything you want to do to this engine. And then once you kind of sort through things and pick the parts that you want on your engine, when it comes time to tune it, the N54 is incredibly responsive to tuning. If you were to flash your car with a stage one MHD tune with no other modifications, you can net up to 50 horsepower over stock. But really the magic with the N54 is that the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. So even with simple upgrades like a dual cone intake and intercooler and downpipes, not really a whole lot going on there, you can easily get an extra 100 horsepower out of your N54. And if you decide that you really want to go all in, you do things like larger turbos, a fuel system upgrade, a custom tune, it's not unreasonable to expect near 600 horsepower on stock internals. And things don't even end there. You can take things even farther. You can do head studs. You can do pistons on this engine. There are so many aftermarket options where basically you could say that the aftermarket potential for this engine is limitless. The only flaw that I see in the N54's aftermarket game is when it comes to the availability of aftermarket ECUs. Right now, if you are looking to swap an M54, at this exact moment, you're going to need a donor car. And that's because in order to run an M54, you need the stock DME, the CAS module, and the key from your donor car. And you're going to need all of that stuff because of direct injection. At the moment, there aren't really a whole lot of ECUs on the market that support direct injection. But I did see from PRI that it seems like Link has a new ECU out that is capable of driving the injectors on a direct injection motor. And so in terms of if this works on the M54, I don't know that yet. I haven't seen a whole lot about this ECU working specifically on the M54, but if it does work that way, it would be an absolute game changer. Because at the moment, if you want to swap an M54, like I said, you need all of those modules and components from a donor car or you have to convert your M54 back to port injection. And so until we start seeing companies like Haltech, Link, AEM, companies like that offering standalone ECUs, I just don't see the M54 being swapped into other chassis at the rates that you see the LS, the 2J, and the Honda K-Series swapped. 
Like I mentioned in the availability section, the best way to get an M54 is to just simply buy a car that came with one from the factory. But, like I said, since this is just a common, normal production engine, it's actually pretty easy to find one. And if you're just looking to just buy the engine itself, you can typically pick up an engine between $1,500 to $3,000. So in terms of the economics or the value proposition of the engine itself, I would say it's about average. But that's not really the M54 strong point. Where the M54 really shines in the value category is when it comes to horsepower per dollar, especially when you compare the M54 with other naturally aspirated BMWs like the S54 from the last episode of Power Rankings. Modifications on M54 powered cars can obviously vary based on which brands and which products you buy, but what I will say the common theme of modifying an M54 is, is it is absolutely bananas the amount of horsepower you are able to get for such a little amount of monetary investment. And that is absolutely perfect for a car enthusiast on a budget. Like I mentioned before, you can go get the MHD Super License, and it provides you pretty much all the tunes that you will need going from full stock to full bolt-on. And then once you start to spend your money on actual power upgrades, you will make a substantial return on investment. So where does the M54 rank on my Is It Worth It scale? Well, in my opinion, the M54 is definitely worth your time as a car enthusiast. But even though I own an M54 and I really, really like this engine, it is not an across-the-board recommendation. What really limits the M54 in my eyes is, well, its problematic reliability record. But if you have the money, time, and patience to deal with those issues, the M54 might just be your new favorite engine.